The following podcast contains mature language and adult discussion. Kev. Yes? Did you get your Mega Millions ticket? No. It's 977. When does it go tonight? Friday. Oh. So you have some time. Do you have that they have that gimmick where you can buy it online or do you do you still have to go to a I a physical store? I I rarely I rarely play. Yeah. I haven't I can't remember the last time I it's did got, that. It's got to the point now where you could it, do it. It used to it used to be cuz you cut that music off. Thanks. That's way too loud for me. I can't. I, I'm at that age where I, I got to turn the radio down when I take a left. Um, do you love the radio when you're lost? I'm going to ask you a question. Do it, what's, oh, yeah. I do too. You got to, man. You, it's like, fuck, like you. It's bec- you got lost because you were fucking probably singing to the radio anyway. You missed your fucking turn. I think my I think one of my my favorite things to do is go ahead and put shit in the GPS, but then like seven minutes into the ride, you're so tired of the bitch's fucking voice that you turn it fucking off the the volume off. You mute her, absolutely. And th- yeah, and then now you're you're, you're, you're not like, looking at the fucking no, thing. Fuck, you're done. No, Just you're driving. The, turn and the shit off and, until you realize, like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm I'm going towards the sun. This isn't right. But. uh no, it just, I, I, it used to be like I would buy the lottery ticket and people would say, we're well, never going to win. I said, yeah, but, you know, for three days you get to think of what if. And now I'm thinking of, I got, I've got to the point where it's just like, man, like, okay, so it's actually, it's like after everything, it's 350, okay? So I, so I can't even bail Trump out. I mean, there's not. No, even you're enough, right. He's more in the even, hole. There, there's not even enough money to fucking to bail. Because that would be. I mean, if you got like six hundred, could you imagine if you got six hundred thousand, six hundred million dollars, and you fucking cleared that, and you fucking covered his loan? No, I can't. Can you? You still have a fucking a hundred and fifty mil. You know, you'd have one fifty, but but he's not done. But they're not done yet, so that's it could be. Yeah, annoying. but I mean that. I mean, you're just talking, see cash options. Cash options four sixty one. That's before Uncle Sam, so that's that's going to be what two 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 fifty. Uh, three. Which would be probably thirty seven percent, right? So three ten. So that's good. All right. 310, 310 million. You could get, um, what, would you, like, what are you going to do with it? Well, I was going to ask you, what would, do you, so since you do that optimistic what if, what would Kevin Nash do? I predict you'd do nothing. You, it would still oh, be. Oh, I, I mean, I wouldn't BMF, do BMF. I would de- BMF I definitely. BMF all fucking wouldn't, night long. I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't do anything. I'd probably, um, I'd get, I'd move. Mm -hmm. I'd probably go, uh, with that kind of money, I'd probably go to fucking Hawaii. Mm. I'd probably go to Hawaii. I'd want to stay in the States. I'd go to Hawaii and I'd build a a fucking modest home. Nothing, I wouldn't, you know, because you got to clean that motherfucker or have somebody cl- <laughs> no, you or have somebody, else clean or have somebody clean it, which that fucks up your whole fucking walk around naked thing. Um, I'd build my own gym. Spence was cleaning. Right. Build my own gym. Maybe fucking learn how to like fly a helicopter because that, that'd be your, your means of like, getting around. Yeah. Well, why risk it? 
Why fucking we we were meant to be on the ground. I was the, What's cooler though than if I can like you like you can fucking you can private jet the fuck out of people. To me on on succession when they got in those fucking those choppers that was and they land on the fucking on the river in New York and, mm-hmm. and get out to that that's Pier fucking, eleven yeah yeah that's fucking that's that's so much sweet like to me like that's so James Bond get out with fucking smoking a cigar fucking long is, fucking overcoat on pretty dope you know yeah. though i have this this childhood thing that that I, I i legit can't get rid of when i see choppers in the city they used to do <clears throat> you know when they would do the traffic uh from the chopper yeah. on the radio like oh the bqe is backed up half hour well on 66 w a, uh, NBC, AM radio, the, the old station that Howard used to be on and Soupy Sales and Imus, the traffic woman, uh, during a broadcast, it crashed into the Hudson River and she died, and I heard it. Um, Jane Dornacker, her name was, and uh, I think it was like 85 or 86. So I was like, or 13. And I was like, fuck. It's like, was that real? What was that? And you hear like, She's yelling like, pull up, pull up, pull up. And then on the impact, there's a little bit of like, <laughs> like it's, I'm not laughing. I'm really Whoa. not. I'm, it's, it was horrific. So anytime I think about flying over Manhattan, over the river, I, it's the Jane. At Dornacker any point thing, during this, was she masturbating? I don't know what, because she was saying, <laughs> pull up the stick. So I don't know what she was uh, telling see, the pilot to do, but that always leads to death. So you yeah. got to be real careful. So. You know, if you had the nine hundred, say, if you if in a in a world with no taxes and and you got the you got the billion, um, what if you like? Would you have ever considered like buying the Pistons or something like that? Oh fuck! You can you, investing in those a, are in all, a, those are those are like billion dollars. I mean, I, I that, know <laughs> a billion wouldn't even get you in now. Yeah, That's crazy. I mean, but. you know, it's but that, but on top of that, man, like. To me, the last thing you want is fucking to have to, like, be someplace, do something. Like, that's the last thing you want, right? Like, fuck, I'm Well, 60, you, yeah. I, yeah, fuck it. Hey, well, I want to I wanna be powerful. I, I just want to fucking not have to see, talk, do anything, just, you know? It appears you could you could get a sizable investment. You'd have to finance a little, but you could have the New Orleans Pelicans for one point six. And does that come with the Smoothie King Arena? <laughs> no, I don't. If they own it and it's an asset, then it would. So yeah, apparently yes. Is the answer. Yeah, Steve I just says can. yes. So. You could host just Raw the fact there. that it's the Smoothie King Arena was would, that would. I would I would be more apt to fucking talk to somebody at a, at a, a local uh, bar and say, you know, I own the Smoothie King Arena, as opposed to the Pelicans. And the Pelicans are a playoff team this year. So, Let's where are they at? There it is. Um, so this oh, is there. a val- valuation. So Phoenix at four, uh, Milwaukee Bucks three point two, Brooklyn Nets three point two billion. These are billion, by the way. Uh, Charlotte three, Houston two. Hawks. Clippers. You don't wait. The Lakers aren't in there anyway. That's a that's a that's the franchise of franchises. The history you'd be assuming. Keep going the down. video rights alone. The, but yeah, but these are there's there's no way that this is this is it. This is what they pay these people paid for probably at this at this juncture. Like in two. Oh you know he, I mean? yeah, because because half of yeah no, yeah. yeah there's the no pay. way fucking that. that See mm-hmm. the two hundred two hundred thirty twenty thirteen. That guy paid. Oh, okay. So these are the purchase prices. Yeah, that's the purchase price. Oh, all right. What the fuck am I talking about? Yeah. It's so like if fucking, you did, it's like, it's, it's like my mom saying she she got a, you know, she paid twenty two hundred dollars for the sixty six Mustang. Right, and 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 remind you of that over the last. Yeah. The prices are ridiculous <laughs> now. This is ridiculous. Yeah, mom, it was fucking ninety three years ago. So if you so. did buy the Pistons, let's say, okay, let's say you had that that uh, that kind of win in the lottery, would you be a like an owner GM? Would you be? I know you don't want to do anything, but let's just say you were doing it. Uh, I wouldn't do would it. You, how involved would you be? <laughs> I'd, Are you the I'd, personality type to be like the owner GM, or would you hire somebody to run the team? 
I would I would never buy a fucking pro. It's that's. I'm not even in guy. fantasy. We can't no, even fantasize. I can't even. It's not. It, it's not a fantasy. It's like right, fucking, it's a horror. It, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm actually scaring you by saying you yeah, have to put on a suit. I wouldn't know if I owned it. I definitely wouldn't have to put a suit on. Well, if you go to the arena, oh, fuck the coaches wear track suits now. <laughs> what the fuck? That COVID yeah, changed do. all that shit, man. Thank God, too. Never made sense, fucking guys in three piece. I still don't get it in hockey. A guy back behind the glass in a fucking suit, suit and tie. Like, what the fuck? Why? I grew up watching it that way. So I'm yeah, used to, like, to me, fucking it's like, Pat it's, Riley. Styling. It's the same as basketball. Like, it just makes so much more sense to fucking. Because the only time you ever saw your coach in a suit was at a game. Right. You know? Oh, yeah. Because they're wearing workout. Because they're wearing during work, the, yeah, yeah. We're They're going, you know. So, uh, to me, my, my goal in life was never to have to wear a tie to work. Well, that's fine. Very few people do now, but I think coaches, I think NHL coaches are the only offices that yes. make you wear. I might buy an NHL team just so I can coach it and wear a tie. That, that way, I'll just be fucking miserable. I'll be and like on t- like sitting on ice getting piles. Billionaire owner of the New York Rangers, Kevin Ash, was found hanging by his tie today <laughs> exactly. in his office in Madison Square Garden, masturbating. Um, mm-hmm. Did you did you watch uh, the Bob Probert thing on? Uh, I think it's on Prime. I'd seen it when it first came out about two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I loved it. He's a fucking yeah. Mad he man. he was he was I. I ran into him a couple of times, you know, in my life. And uh-huh. it, was, it was always a treat. <laughs> Explain. I, Even off the ice? Oh, fuck. I mean, I, I worked at a, at a strip club. Oh, so he was drinking and, yeah. Fucking Yahoo and Yahoo and Yababa and A to Z, Bubba. Uh, a to Z, he could, yeah. he could he, he could easily... Like a hang with a chic. Yeah. Well, that's part of the, from what I recall of the documentary, that um, the uh, he really fucked himself up um, over time. It wasn't just, you know, as a fan, you see what's going on on the ice. Then maybe he's, maybe he's a calm guy outside, outside of the game. But no, he talked about living oh, the gimmick. Sma- he, he, was, sma- he smashed, I mean, oh. several fucking, you know. Yeah. yeah. But again, and we talked about the, it was an era, the the hockey. I I've said younger people, please you please YouTube some hockey fights. I YouTube Ty Domi nineteen eighty four or or um Dave Schultz Philadelphia but I think, Flyers. I think, Pro, I think Probert's still like considered the heavyweight champion. I think so. Yeah, I think so. But the thing is about Probert, like I think that one year, I don't know if he had thirty. I think he had twenty nine goals. Like he would lead the, you know, he would lead the the NHL in penalty minutes. Like, like Detroit. It was funny because he, ironically, he lived, in, you know, lived and played in Detroit for for a period. But he lived across. I think he grew up across the the, uh, the river in Windsor, if I remember. Mm. And um, he, uh, Prober was like back then. Like Detroit would have like thirteen hundred homicides. You know, like we'd leave, and then and the ne- like the next closest would be like you know Newark would have four twenty, <laughs> you know, like Detroit would like far and how, above. Yeah, that's how Prober was with penalty minutes. Like Prober's Sound penalty and... minutes, and then the next guy, but Prober would still fucking like uh, Prober made the All Star team. You know, which is I mean, he was a, he was a, a, a talented. I remember when he came back. Uh. He did. He he went to he went to uh, he went away for like they put, they put him behind bars for like a year, and uh, he came back, and I think I'm pretty sure it was in uh, it was at the on the on the wing at Joe Lewis, and he scored a goal in the game. He came back. Mm. I, I could be wrong, but 
The uh, I'm seeing that he led the league in 88-89 with 398 penalty minutes, and that is the year that you referenced that he had 29 goals. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So he was busy. He was busy. And he was, uh, like, when you see him when he was young, man, he was like a handsome cat, like, you know, ladies' guy. Yeah. So. Is there a sport more difficult? I mean, just take ice skating. Forget about anything else. Just take ice skating. Then add being punched in the head for two hours to that. What, do they play four games a week maybe? Four times a week. Not once a week like the NFL. Four times a week. They don't have NFL padding either. No. It's unbelievable. I mean, there was a time. When did helmets become mandatory? I'm oh. saying like early 80s, right? I, I, I yeah. Recent. Well, I call it. I recent. remember like when I was a kid you, you, and we would go to, and the, the Wings played in Olympia back then. And um, fuck, man, like it was like Gordie Howe and that group. There wasn't a fucking. There wasn't a guy on the ice that had well, the fucking goalies didn't have masks either, you know? Yeah, I mean, it was seen as, I'm sure, like it was seen as like. Well, I, I, it was like anything. Do, right? It was like anything else. You know, when you when you when you look at the back of Look magazine and there's a doctor selling Philip Moore cigarettes and he's in his fucking scrubs with a fucking stethoscope going, you know, <laughs> as soon as I get out of surgery, I light one of these up. Absolutely. When you're living in those kind of times, man, it's just. I'd walk a mile for a camel. And you know what the fucking problem is? Is if you, I don't think that there's anybody, like any generation, um, that has seen more of a change than like mine. Like we went from fucking, like. Not everybody had a television to black and white TV to color TV, you know. Mm -hmm. And we went fucking from vinyls to eight tracks to cassettes to CDs. Mm -hmm. These kids now, like fucking, it's it, nowadays. Like I and I, I'm sure that uh, with AI, but we're you know I'm still I'm still kicking and I've I've got a. Did you see where YouTube the other day had a? a a disclaimer where you have to say that if you do a something with that uh, involves AI that isn't obvious that you have to and it's trying to make a point or like a polit if you did for for for, for politics or that uh, you have to you have to no. say that this was created by AI. So if you produce a video that yeah. is computer That's, generated, yeah, then say it's you know say. For instance, uh, I don't know. Um, Donald Trump was to be in front of a, a, a bunch of people, and um, he would be talking about Chinese electric cars, mm -hmm. and um, the uh, this is a what is that there? Oh, see, oh, so see. that says altered or synthetic content. Yes. Mm. So he would, you know, Trump would uh, would say something about electronic cars and uh, electric cars and, and, and the trade with China and how he was going to put a 100% tariff on it. And then from there, say, if, if he doesn't get elected, you know, fuck. I mean, it's just going to be a fucking bloodbath. Blood, bloodshed all over, bloodbath. Yeah, just right. fucking bloodbath and just like something like that. And it was AI. He'd be like, you know, you can't do that. You got to put it up to that. That's AI. In our case, it wasn't AI, but I was going to say I don't. Yeah, I'm just saying if that was to happen, they would now have to clarify that they're right. not fucking actually insane. Listen, listen to the upside down world we're in. Oh, it's a, unbelievable. A fake, a fake threat of bloodshed has to get a warning. A yes. real, one real one running from a president. Not put it right up. If if you and I were to fucking to say that fucking. There's going to be bloodshed tomorrow in fucking it, 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 the city center in New Haven. Oh, fucking, you, you, they'd, be, they'd be at your door. You got a doorbell. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Unbelievable, Baba.
Joe Bishop. But at, the, yes. at the same time, though, yes, you know, and because they always say how fucking oh you fucking liberals you're so okay. Trump's got to come up with fucking four fifty two, whatever the fuck it is, and they're like, well, he they can start putting the lien on his fucking property, and and then they go and if you do some research, and I think even on CNN they said that they 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 like named three or four different cases where like one company owed thirty five billion dollars. And they were they they settled it one billion, you know. They had some 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 cases. And the thing is about this case that is probably the most perplexing because you can say what you want to about Mitch McConnell. He did the world a favor not letting that motherfucking Garland be in the fucking Supreme Court. I mean, he's like, like fuck, man. Our attorney general's not fucking. Uh, when is Mitch done? He made the announcement. It's. Uh, um, I think he he, he had an, a, a a clue of when it was. Then he said when they stop running Jetson reruns. So he's he's all over the place. Um, here's here's my Mitch here's my Mitch impersonation. You just have to freeze your camera, sir. Sir, would you like to? But you know the the thing with with the the Trump thing though is like, he, it's not like, like Deutsche Bank or like nobody. He didn't fuck anybody out of money. Like you know who? Trump. He just fucking lied to get uh, a to better get his fucking, loan. It's a, to get a, a, a yeah. more favorable loans against uh, his and my. Yeah. It's it's like. It, it's like when if you, if fucking if I tell you that my my Mustang's worth a million six, and you give me a million six in fucking, I'm that's kind on of an you. Asshole. I'm kind of an asshole. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. on you. That ain't on me. But he has screwed a lot of contractors. He's, he he was a terrible builder. I can tell you firsthand. I I know he's. I, hey, you know what? The thing is, man. It's like everybody. If 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 he was in the drug business, he'd be fucking Escobar. I mean, he would fucking he would he, he would. That's just he's just he's a fucking he's a scam. He's a con artist. He's a really fucking good con artist. He's the fucking poorest billionaire on the planet. I don't think he's smart enough to be Escobar. <sighs> No, Escobar was pretty brilliant. I don't know though. Trump might get his own prison. Is he is he building his own? He should. Call it. Uh, Bring the hookers in and fucking uh, uh, the lobster. Right, the scene from Goodfellas with the uh, steaks. No, the one from the Escobar story. Oh, fucking, the one, yeah, the Escobar one. Or they um, they, they, made, they put him in his own prison. Then then they fucking they still like tunneled out. They said, "Fuck it, man, we're we're not doing it. We're we're doing our own thing." Dom so. says he'll get Mexico to pay for it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, how about Texas? Texas decides they're going to go ahead and start deporting. Yeah, and, then, and they and got then, uh, the then, green light from the Supreme Court. Yeah, and then Mexico says, well, you can't deport. Like, we're not going to take your deportations. Well, where the fuck did they come from? Well, they're not all, it's not all Mexico. We know this, right? Uh, no, but fucking, they're, they're coming across the Guadalajara and fucking border from Argentina. And fucking Mexico ain't got a fucking problem letting them march through fucking Mexico. They want us to put them on a plane back to Argentina. Or Nine tenths of China. the law, fucking China, China, China. Nine tenths of the law. You fucking if if they don't get in, then I I love when they they, they show on TV like th there's the wall and then it just fucking stops and there's like fucking people like like there's like a dirt mound and like the, it, it it's like. You know, hide and seek. People just like going right around the wall. I'm like, oh, jeez.
I'm more conservative than liberal on the immigration thing. I always have. I had I wrote a paper oh in college. Oh my god! Called, I'm way more. When the melting pot overflows, I, I said. I said fucking. Uh, I got so much fucking heat when somebody said, what would you do? I said, I'd fucking, I'd mine the fucking border. They're like, oh, you can't do that. I'm like, I know you can't do that. I guarantee you a family of fucking four goes across and fucking they all hit bouncing Betty's and fucking boom. <laughs> you guys, you guys want to go? I'm fucking pretty good. But, uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a fucking mess. Joe Bishop asks, uh, says, Kevin, uh, is Atlantic City still on? I still still tentative. No, nah, I, I talked to the guy and like it, it was he had we we had um, some discussions back and forth. I don't think it's I don't think it's a go. Okay. Oh, I, I also have to say I, so we so we don't have any um discretionary uh bullshit that um I will not be in uh at in Phil in the city of Philadelphia, for anything, ever, ever at all, but especially from the fourth through the seventh. So I will not be in Philadelphia. I have a personal issue I have to take care of, and I will not be in Philadelphia. Okay. So I'll be. I will not be a WrestleCon. I will not eat. Green eggs and ham. I will not eat them. Sam, I am. Would you, no, could no. you in a box? Would you, could you with a fox? Would you, could you with a mouse? Would you, could you in a house? Well, I was looking forward to, to Ruth's Chris, if, if, if nothing else. If, if nothing else. We would have went Philly. to Capitol Grill. Oh, Cap, that's right. You said Capitol instead of. They put uh. fucking too much butter on. David Martinez, hey, Kev, I'm the one that commented on Heenan's Goldberg remarks. I understand fans were booing. I've heard that before, but to me that sounds like a prime opportunity for an undefeated heel run. Isn't that what happened with Floyd Mayweather? He went from hardworking undefeated blue chipper to hu at, from humble beginnings to filthy rich self-made millionaire partying playboy who still never got beat. Anyway, love the show. Shout out to Sean for always having the balls to insert humor, even in the sketchiest of positions. I think that, no, it, it's not anywhere near the same because May Mayweather didn't fucking box every night. So the run would have been, right, exactly. So what, you fight two times a year? Completely different. Yeah. Trip Jones, thanks for the tip on Get Blitzed. Legit stuff for sure. All right, Trip. Thank you. Is he is he with us tonight? Is Mickey Ray with us tonight? I know sometimes he's in the audience. We should I Mickey, you should be erecting a statue in Kevin's and my image in front of the Get Blitzed headquarters for what we've done for the product, for God's sakes. Maybe how about a flavor? Can we get a flavor? What would our flavor be, Kevin? Don't throw me under the bus. I'm 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 real I'm 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 fine with my my fucking key lime pie. Pelt. You can, you can call how, it, about, how about click, Saturday call night it, pelt? Cl click lime pie. There you go. Borg Genesis Berry. Yeah. From Dom. Uh James Miller. LeBron was a wrestling fan. I vaguely remember him talking about it when they interviewed him after having gone to a Monday night raw at the Gund Arena. Back in like 2003 or 2004. And there's some images. A young spry LeBron. Uh, in the front row, no doubt. Get on his flip phone, on the Panasonic flip phone action there. The Barney Rubble uh, phone there. with the. You make sure he pulls up his antenna before he uses that. Taking a picture of Steve Austin. You ever meet LeBron? No, I don't think so. Where does he stand? G give me the Mount Rushmore. Is he on it? I hate that term. The Mount Rushmore? Yes. I said it to be a man of the people. Where I do you where do you that. consider him in to be all, in all the goddamn greats of basketball? Is he up there? Top five, top ten? I 
I mean, he's definitely. I, I have no specific order of players. Right, but just but, a group, maybe. Yeah, know. he's fucking absolutely top five. Okay. That whole, they, they, like, Mount Rushmore of, of, of wrestlers. And then it's like, that people put Andre. I'm like, really? Like, so we're going to take. What are you wrestling? measuring? Exactly. Because it's like it, money drawn or, or, or. Ability, duration of career, uh, number of matches. Like I don't know. You'd have to be very specific with with what you're talking about with wrestling. I love when people uh, make make comments like uh, greatest WrestleManias of all time. Well, of course, uh, WrestleMania three. Really, that that match is when you think of matches, you think of that. Andre and Hulk is is that's that, that was or is well, it the, the, the house it, though was well, at the yeah, time was, was absolutely in the ninety three thousand one hundred seventy three if I'm not incorrect but I'm I'm quite sure that fucking like favorite bathroom fucking experience would be Woodstock sixty eight mm, you no, know but the no. crowd fucking crowd was <laughs> crowd was there. Could you think of anything less, less enjoyable than an outdoor festival where you sleep in a tent? I mean, this should be like a sentence for repeat traffic offenders, where you sleep in a tent in the elements surrounded by people. I mean, you're not showering and you're surrounded by people who probably haven't showered in a very long time, irrespective of the festival. The port of Johns that didn't work or got overflowed or whatever. Then they tried to redo it in the 90s and it was hellacious. It's, yeah, Awful. it's... Part of history, my ass. I think that, you know, it goes back to the who when that they had that thing in Cincinnati where they opened the doors for festival seating and most people got trampled to death. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, you can't... My, my wife was, you know, because now we... We've we've got to rebook our our vacation because we've you know we've got some things we got to take care of. So she's like, "Well, you better get on it." And I said, "Fuck!" I said, "Don't worry." I said, "Worst worst case scenario, I said we can go down to Haiti and light some fires." She goes, "That's not funny." I said, no, "I know it's not." It's no. fucking... So I don't. I, is there, there is there no military? Like I, I, it's like there's the police, there's the militia. And there's the fucking gangs. You know, with I, those governments that, you know. Yeah, like, with those banana, it's banana like. Banana republics, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just, uh, like the, and the cops are just, it's, it's as bad as it gets. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on top of that, it's the, it's the world's, like, most poverty-stricken country. If I, if I was to get nine, $900 million, I would absolutely try to help that situation that would be something that and 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 the fucking the palestinian kids that are starving those two things would would get a, if, if i could do if i could get 900 but those are the things that i would take care of right because there's fucking we my um my wife went was was talking to a, a lady at the at the hospital yesterday and um, she was from Haiti. The nurse was from Haiti, and she still has like all of her family there. And I was just like, "Oh, like it doesn't hit hit it, it hits home, but it doesn't hit home until you like realize like here's somebody that has the, their their fucking family is there, you know." Yeah. How trite am I that I wanted you to buy the pistons, and you're gonna help the children of Haiti and Palestine. Well. Shows you what different places our minds are in when we sit here. It makes it fun, though. That's what they tell me. I just think that uh, I couldn't do the Pistons any good. 
<laughs> you could do better for Haiti. I could, yeah. You'd be better served I, putting it, out the it, fires it, in Haiti. It, it, it'd probably be an, e- an easier, easier accomplishment to get Haiti and Palestine up, to get and, the up and running to get the, the, to get the yeah, to get the pistons in the fucking play in. Oh, fuck. My daughter's school, Wagner. Yeah, they will got will be it. eliminated tomorrow by <laughs> UNC. Yeah, they fucking got in. Uh, Tom Talker 2000. I always thought Scott and Dustin Rhodes had one hell of a punch. Although Dustin was like an uppercut slap in a way. Boss Man was similar when he got going. Callaway would be another for damn sure. So he he, he put Dustin in there and then kind of took it away. Yeah, I was the underhand <laughs> slap. Doesn't gotta, qual- yeah. He's not the Mont Rushmore yeah. of punches. D- D- for that. Dustin threw a fucking hell of a punch. You know, if, if, if you. If, I mean, if you really want kind of an underhand slap type of a situation, what the, what the fuck? Just don't. Of all the Golden Girls, Dustin yeah. Rhodes had the best punch. I, I'm just thinking to myself, like, did you not, like, before you sent that, did you not read it back and go, that doesn't fucking cover anything? <laughs> uh, uh, the, the true rival says, uh, Hey, yo, Big Sean, you losing some weight, huh? Let's see Big Kevin versus Sean soon. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, are, we, what are we doing? I'm dead. I was going to say, it, it, what, Fucking. a competition for who can reach the the uh, the the cooler from the couch I've seen would the be comp- the match. Competition or <clears throat> who can fucking juggle these fucking incredibly fucking... Uh, Lowbrow <laughs> questions. <laughs> Twenty four pounds, by the way. Tomas Torres. Oh no! From what I remember, that lady committed suicide shortly after this because of depression and embarrassment for the situation. You're, you, of all the ones you picked, you picked that one. I've, I just want to say that that we we um we didn't know this when we read it, and it was it was revealed to us afterwards, so it was not part. Well, of if they that. watched the show, did we make that fucking? Do apparent? you know how many people had to comment to people that you didn't watch the whole clip? They realized that at the end, Pe- they people's attention spans are that of the African titi fly. Yeah, but it's if they're without, they just watched the clip. So would we fucking clickbaited that? They they, they um. No, no, no! But in the show, they people arrow through shit. Oh, they, fuck they them! Click that that's the fuck I just, them. Anyone that didn't know, I just wanted to tell you. Yeah, that, well, that, and, 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 yeah. If you do that, well, go fuck yourself. Fig, figure it out yourself. And definitely don't fucking give them any any time rub? on our show. Yeah. Well, no. I needed to transition into this week's Dead or Alive game, so I thought, I, oh. I thought that was as as good as I could do. Okay. Um, so uh, I I didn't get any wrong last week. No, no. I think you only got one wrong of the ten that we've done here. Five more. This isn't a regular thing. It was just a fun thing that came up. Uh, Gallagher, the comedian. Oh fuck! His career is. I think he's still alive. He no. He's he is dead. He is. Dead. Oh. I think twenty twenty maybe. Marion Ross, Mrs. Cunningham on Happy Days. Huh, I'm gonna say yes. To alive. Dead. Oh no, ninety five. Okay. Still kicking. Owen oh, two. Judy Tenuta. Judy Tenuta. I don't even know who the fuck that is. She was a comic, uh played the accordion. Well, so yeah, she's still alive. She is still uh no, actually she's dead. Okay, Roger oh, Staubach. Alive. Correct. LA Knights run. Um look into my eyes. I'm serious. Where's the contract? Hold on, I'm ready. Where's the contract? Give me the pen. Maybe, maybe you need to look in my eyes. Um, I don't know. Seems to me like uh, when The Rock comes back, doing The Rock isn't probably going to get you up the car too far. Nope. Don't do The Rock when you've don't got do The, the rock. rock. You yeah. could do The Rock it money. You could rock the rocket money. Oh. If you're wondering if you're paying for recurring subscriptions uh, that are draining your wallet, I'll tell you who can let you know. Rocket money. Rocket, trust Rocket with all of your financial needs, for God's sakes. But 
Rocket Money is special. Okay. Do you find any subscriptions popping up in your bills that you forgot about or you paid twice, you didn't realize it? Let Rocket Money take care of this for you. The interface is so easy. It brings up a list. If you're watching, you can see it there. It brings up a list of what your recurring subscriptions are. You might have duplicates. You might have stuff you've been paying for for five years that you didn't even realize was a recurring subscription. You might have had something that you realized was a recurring subscription, but and you intended to pay. That's I do this all the time. The free trial. Just drop your credit card in there. Right. Who remembers 30 days from now? You did the free trial and you've been paying for it. 75% of people, this is a real fact, 75% of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about. Did you know this? Before I started using Rocket Money, I thought I had like, I don't know, like the five or 10 I could name off the top of my head. <laughs> was I surprised. I couldn't believe it when they showed me what I was paying for each month, okay? You've got streaming services, fitness apps, delivery services, it's never ending, okay? Um, thanks to Rocket Money, I'm no longer wasting money on the ones that I forgot about, and you don't have to either. It's fun. It's kind of like a game. You go through, you tap them, and Rocket Money takes care of the whole cancellation for you, okay? It's a personal finance app, finds, cancels those unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so you can grow your savings. Over 5 million users, and they've saved a total of $500 million, uh, more than the Trump legal bill in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all the app's features. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Nash. That's rocketmoney.com slash Nash. Rocketmoney.com slash Nash. Thank you, Rocket Money. Thank you. And if you want to be part of the live audience here, like everyone who is watching this recording, Go to clickthistv.com and you get that and so much more exclusive content. You get the show early, you get it without commercials, and you get to be here live every Wednesday night and participate. Get to ask Kevin some questions. So Do you think if we get like get some heat going with LA Knight that fucking maybe um, we can uh, talk AJ into fucking showing up to uh, at SmackDown before WrestleMania? I think he's got a sh better shot of showing up here than SmackDown. Um, ah, uh, based on that, um, Britt, uh, one of our live audience members and longtime subscribers, lovely young lady from Philly, uh, who's hopefully engaged by now, uh, says she thinks LA is very misunderstood. What's her, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm too busy doing shit moves. Right. I'm trying try, try to, try to get another push. So. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, man. He might get some extra TV time this week. What do you think? Wait, hold, wait, we wait, keep wait. talking. Nah, we, we keep gonna... talking. They're going to have to write him in. Somebody's going to fucking get on AJ's ass. Go, come on, AJ. Fucking, you know. Show up. Yeah. You took um, the, he, why, did, why did AJ take so much time off? Was it, He wouldn't hurt, right? Because he, he, he came back. He looked great. I don't know. They'll tell us. <clears throat> there's just like there's so many top guys, and it just seems like like that. It was just very hard to, um, you know, just find. I mean, Romans Romans and two two like two main events. Cody's in two main events. Everybody's in ninety three main events. Yeah, I don't. I I really don't know what I'm. Like the three way with with Randy just seemed that kind of seemed kind of just thrown together. Well, I just say uh, yeah. Some of it. Do I? I guess they. Ha I guess they're cornered into doing two nights now, right? Because you can't go backwards from a revenue standpoint. They're used to that two night revenue, so you've you've. You've got to make two nights, with four hours each, right? Yeah, you got to make but that the work. Thing, you know, like the thing is, man, it's just with it, with Endeavor involved, and it, 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 they'll be bringing some A list people, and I mean, they'll have some cutaways and some things to do. But it's it's going to be, I mean, it's it's really an epic show. 
You the, know, the WrestleMania production you're talking. About. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's the wrestling is is important, hmm. but like, there's a lot of like to me, like what, like I remember, I, I, which was the last one that I was at live. God, I know I was there with it was Trish, me, and uh, Lita watched it downstairs. Ugh, fuck. What was remember, the venue? Uh, it, it was like some giant fucking stadium. I don't New know. Orleans? Nah, might have been. I don't know. After that, like when they started, it used to be like because in Jerry's in Jerry at the at the Cowboys, mm-hmm. uh, Jerry's Dome. Like we had, um, I sat with um, Scott and Kid, and we had like a little. Like a little box, like a little small box. And we had like cocktails, and then because that was like the first time they had brought cocktails back since they ran in Orlando. So I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, this is kind of chill, you know. Uh, you know, to, to, like it used to be." And then the, the next year, like it was like a monitor downstairs, and then that met. Life was just that was brutal. I mean, where'd they put you guys? We're down st- underneath, like you can fucking like it, you can see the concrete steps and shit. It's like fucking, banging above you, the feet. Uh, and yeah, oh, no, wow. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's it's it's. I've got better fucking like ideas of, of shit I want to do in my life than feel like I'm like a, a fucking a stowaway on a fucking oil tanker <laughs> watching <laughs> WrestleMania. Kevin, step into the engine room. Yeah, like, fuck that, man. Have like, a scotch. I, I, I'd rather watch it on my fucking phone. You know, laying right. in my fucking hotel room. Like, one, one of the times we, we all went back and somebody rigged it on the at the, in the hotel room, and we sat it and, and just watched it in the hotel room. So you didn't even go to the venue. No, and then I didn't. I didn't. I didn't go to L.A. I didn't go to the venue. How many of the guys come back for that? Like, if if, if I were to go into one of the the hospitality rooms where they were playing it on TV and they had the bar and stuff, would you have twenty five? workers there i have no idea you know i'd love to go and and, and see paul and, and see sean but you know fuck it's that's you know hey can you make a little time for me i know it's the biggest oh, yeah, no, fucking that, yeah. the biggest two, two two nights of the of the fucking year for you but uh you think maybe you could uh let me sit gorilla position with you and get on the fucking maybe get on the cans for a fucking match <laughs> Say some fucked up shit to Cole. Yeah, just fuck with Cole. Talk oh, about man. their cocks. Talk about their cocks. Who is this? Talk about their cocks. <laughs> Johnny Ace. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, oh fuck. I'll tell you who will be at WrestleMania. The Rock. The Rock. There's is he gonna this... be? A, he's, what is he gonna be? <laughs> is he, is he a, a heel? heel? Holy shit. Uh, I Jesus, that... I, I, I tell you, man, I, I sometimes I fucking I'm thinking to myself like I know I did not microdose mushrooms today. Why do I feel like I did? Why why do I why do I why do I constantly have this feeling like I've not even microdosed? Why do I feel like I've done a fistful of fucking mushrooms? Well this was <coughs> the, this was the fear in them announcing this two months out, or at least starting it two months out, what do you do every week? Two broadcasts. Well, yeah, it gets to the point where fucking. It's gonna be it's promo, like, promo, I wanna, promo, yeah, promo, promo. Yeah, I want. I want to finish my story. It's like you know what I. I watch you too, man. But I'm gonna watch this guy Richie fucking the, the gentleman on fucking Netflix. I, I like me a little guy Richie. So, you know, I just it, it's it, it's gotten to the point where. I mean, when they had the uh, the uh, signing of the uh, match for the uh, Intercontinental, 
Yeah. Maybe you didn't look into my eyes. Mm. Like I, Them I just fighting words. Yeah. At this point, though, like the, you know, when something sells out, fucking, it's it's like Taylor Swift. Do you think Taylor Swift really sits down for four hours and puts her fucking set list together? Fucking, it's like, it's, it's on autopilot. It's just yeah. fucking, you you they they turn the house lights on now at Raw. There's so many fucking people in those fucking buildings. <laughs> I mean, it's like one more switch, and that's like if there's an actual fire in the building. (laughs) You know, it's like, fuck, man. And they've got that thing fucking rigged with cameras, so it's like, it it feels like you're watching a a, a fucking uh, Scorsese film. You know, like the, the, the layers and the people, and it's like... Yeah, but... uh well, the you know the Rock, in addition to the Being talk the heel. about the heel, <laughs> yes, in addition the to heel. that, the um, the PG thirteen language is being discussed a lot now, and how there seems to be a different set of guidelines for huge, massive stars at the top of the card. They're going to drive millions of dollars than the rest of the card, and I'm I'm reading this going. Yeah, correct. I but PG thirteen is pretty wide open. You just can't throw f bombs, and I think a PG thirteen movie gets a f bomb. Allowed one. I think they're rationing uh, one. Uh, Steve, ch- check that. See if PG thirteen if you get one f bomb. Has anybody seen seen this new movie? Is this the one he was naked it's a on comedy. stage about? Yeah, it's uh, isn't it by the Ferrelli brothers? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I like them. So I see. was talking to Barry Bloom today. He said it was. He said it was worth watching. So, according to um, the guidelines, the F word can be used only once in a PG thirteen film. What's that? Yes. The a, a one one F bomb in a, yeah. a PG thirteen. Yeah, I remember. I hmm. think I think they gave it to to Chris Rock and uh, Longest Yard. I think he he got the f bomb. He got your f. He got to say fuck. So Rocky, I'm looking at Rocky's social media, right? And does it say is it changed from entrepreneur to heel? No, it's no. He's still still signing off final boss. Uh, although it'd be funny if he did begin to sign off as heel on all the, but. He, he I looked at his Instagram. It's he's got like 400 million people that follow him. <laughs> but his content. Now he's in a wrestling angle now, right? He's right. a lot of things. He's an entrepreneur, he's a movie star, he's Black Panther all that shit. But he's and he's got fucking a line of fucking uh skincare products <laughs> at Target. I mean, he covers fucking a lot of bases. But he's in a wrestling angle, so you need to be healed for a couple of months, right? Isn't that we agreed on this? Like, like we got we got to play the role here a little. Yeah. So, and and I'm reading a tweet, right? And it, and he kind of goes there. He's responding. He says, um, "You sound like somebody the Rock can love, drunk and horny. Networks and standards and practices have issues with my language, but I'd rather be real than not." Now here's where we go off the rails. I talk from the heart, shoot from the hip, and always try to have fun. The bad guy's not supposed to try and have fun. Well, if you're you, you'll Br- Brenner and Westworld, I think he's having fun killing everyone. Then complete that statement. <laughs> try to have fun pissing you off, bitch. Yeah. I, okay, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I, you know. As long as you don't want to like turn the country and, and you know to where we, we we don't vote and like I I really I mean saying you got a small dick or saying this or saying that or I really you know uh, the uh, the um, the Cody promo you mean like yeah you said yeah yeah it, it elicited another surreptitious chant from the crowd which is always good. 
I'm down with all this, man. The language. When I first saw that it was going to go this way, that, that first rock promo, when he was doing dropping the asshole and all that, I was like, cool. That we're we're and it was right when Vince was gone. Well, when was he like, when he smacked direction. Cody, he they, they had to bleep it, but he was motherfucking everybody. You know. So I mean, it, it, it's just like. If you want to distend, like if you want me to believe that it could be real, right? You can't say, "Man, I'm going to beat the crap out of you." Correct. Now, when you go by a a, a a bunch of third graders at a fucking bus stop, they're man, motherfucker, man, I'll cap your ass. You know, it's like how many times when you were working the Cheetah Club, when somebody was going to get a little froggy, did you lean in and ask them to look in your eyes before you snatched them by the collar? never. And I never took of... that. I wasn't going to take shit that far. Right, because that's like. There's no fucking going back. There's no going somebody, back, right. Once right, somebody right. looks in your eyes, then they fucking know. Mm. No, I, I mean this. Right. Yeah. And, and you got to fucking, if you're going to come back, you got to take your time when you come back. Like, be all the way, uh, oh, and then come back. Wait. Big pause. Fucking big blockhead turns around. You can learn a, a lot about life and life lessons, fighting conflict from from pro wrestling. You see, did you did I saw a thing that uh, McGregor uh, put it? Uh, 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 I don't know, it was a tweet or an Instagram, but he was saying how he stiffed. A bunch of the fucking stunt guys during the making of uh, Roadhouse. You know, oh, I fucking stuck a fucking couple spinning kicks in their fucking ribs. I'm, I fucking, I, I read it. I, my, 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 I, I couldn't help it. I typed. I said, yeah, I bet you those that fucking stunt crew couldn't wait to hear the fucking words rap. <laughs> Every everybody wants to fucking that. That's exactly what they want is to, to to be in a movie where you're supposed to be like pulling fucking punches by this far and you're fucking teeing people up. And you're in in the scene with someone who's never pulled a punch. Yeah, in their entire life. It's like fuck, man. I remember the, the very, when I worked, worked with uh, Thomas Jane and the Punisher. And they sat me down like I was a fucking uh, gorilla. Now you know if Thomas gets hurt, we can't finish this fucking. F- no shit. Oh, you got a little talking to? Yeah, like what, dude. Like, if, if you, you probably don't, maybe you don't know this, but what I do is a work. <clears throat> and if I hurt that guy, see, we can't go on the next night. So I think we neither got this. of us make money. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, how about go fuck off? Look in my eyes. Oh, you know what? If you drop that. Ooh, they, I, they, they wouldn't they, have even gotten insured. They, no, they, no, they would have fucking, they would have, they would have fucking Pulled immediately the cast right cast somebody else in my in my place. Yeah. Um, I know you're excited to, to when you realize that WrestleMania 10 was 30 years ago oh, today, boy. as of our recording date. You know why I think this is significant. And maybe the only reason it is significant is because it's, I kind of go how ahead. Many years, how many years ago was it? Thirty. There are people listening that were not alive for the Yokozuna Bret Hart main event. Um, I think that was kind of a dividing line into the 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 more cartoonish comical era, and then into where it would go. It wasn't ready yet, but. It was the first one Hogan wasn't on. So the the hulking up and, you know, brother style would have been potentially on the way out. Um, the talent you had in place were people that would have carried it to the more believable contest-based product like Sean, Scott, um, Brett. Um, we you still had to lose, like you know, Dink and Doink are still there, and Men on a Mission are dancing around on the Bushwhackers, and Harvey Whippleman and Mister Fuji. But that was right where it was going to become. They hadn't watched enough ECW yet, but when they watched a little more of it, we would have had the Attitude Era. That was ninety 
94, I want to say, right? 94. When did you come in 94? Was it? Came in 93. Came in 93. So, but when, you know, your title, oh, your title was December 94 into 95. I got thrown out of the ladder match. I closed line razor on the floor and got thrown out. Right, right, right. That was the ladder match. Yeah. That was the ladder match. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Because that was the whole thing is they just sat there and they're like, okay, um, uh, so we're going to have this ladder match. And I was just I'm like, guys, just fucking, like, we need to get me out of the fucking. Out of the equation there. Yeah. yeah immediately. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, like, you know, like you guys are going to, I'm going to fuck shit up. So like, get me out of there. Mm-hmm. So I did a close line Scott, like within like probably the first minute of, of the match. Yeah. Plus I, I you know, I knew it was gonna be fucking I knew it was gonna be something that was was gonna be epic. Because I you know, they'd had some on the road. And I knew they were gonna get all this all the fucking, you know, everything. So I made a big ten grand and uh went and sat by the monitor. Right. First, that was my that was my biggest payoff, like you know, to date. To that date, yeah, yeah. sure. Ten grand for a fucking clothesline, right? Um, yeah, that match, even stylistically, that match, a uh, a, a yeah. warning of what was to come, it was really kind of a turning point there. And it was um, still like it was it was it was. I did. I, I did notice something this past week watching Raw. Is I don't. I don't want to watch um, like the Osprey Spot Fest. It doesn't make sense match. Nor do I want to watch a version of a match that's trying to be of. Uh, like collegiate wrestling match, right? I, I don't want. You know what I mean, I don't. I in don't the want, middle lies entertainment, right? Yeah, in the, in the middle yeah. of that is is where you, where I think it works. I'm not a big. I, I was I was never a, 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 a. I don't like the no sell. I think that I I think that that's one of the like that's a, a pet peeve of mine. I'll watch like I'll see clips. And then out of just nowhere, fucking people will no sell, and I'm just like, if you had that superpower the whole time, why did you take such an ass beating for 17 fucking minutes? If you could just turn around and fucking hit a most muscular and no sell. No, it's stupid. But see, Hogan's was different because it was it was a thing. It was, it was like Kiss playing rock and roll all night. It was we because it, it. it was a pattern. exactly, but it, it it wasn't it wasn't done. I don't think anybody ever thought that what Hulk was doing wasn't entertainment. I would hope not. Right, you know when he when, when during his you know his his heyday is is the the Hulk, the Hulkster days. Mm-hmm. I would hope that nobody watched that. And went, oh fuck! They're really him and the boss man are really fucking going at it here. Hey, you know what came to mind just now? Were you in the Halloween Havoc uh, Chamber of Horrors match? No, I was supposed to be. That's the one you're supposed to be. You got hurt. No, I think my feelings got hurt because they pulled me. You didn't get hurt. No, I thought I thought there was. Oz a card never got hurt. Injured. I was but then again, old... I, I was never gave nothing to the Tin Man. So, I mean, fucking. Right. Because you couldn't see in his eyes being behind the thing. Yeah. Um, I was listening to an old broadcast. There was a New York uh, overnight, like 3 o'clock in the morning uh, on WFA, and Jody McDonald and this guy, Rich Van Cusa, used to do like insider wrestling radio for one hour. And they were going over a card in 90, that would have been 92, right? Um, and they were going over a card, and they 
doing the rundown and they were like, yeah, Chamber of Horrors is going to be an electric chair and this and that. And they go to the, they said, and Oz is going to be, I'm like, I don't think Oz was in that. So no, I Diamond know. Stud was, I think Stud was in that. One Man Gang was in it. Like Abby, wasn't Abby in there for some reason? I, I think, think so. Yeah. I, maybe maybe uh, Mick was in it. I don't know. Oh, probably Mick, yeah, I would assume. Um, our stocks closed at an all-time high today, Kevin. Did you oh, this your, fucking, uh... it's fucking economy. <laughs> yeah, it's in the fucking tanks. Things <clears throat> well, were you're so, rich. You, you get things, to talk about how good things, things were are. Things were so much better four years ago <laughs> when we couldn't find toilet paper. How's your Berkshire doing today? Did you check in on it? Today it seems like it might be a good good news Dude, day. Dude, I'm telling you right now. Do you guys remember when I bought that at? Yes, I think we might have brought up a guy. I don't know if we did it on the air, but I know I, I saw a graph last it's week. It's like fucking 409 right now. Yeah. Okay, so slide back. What was it? Oh, is it a, oh. 416. Oh, go. That my, my, I went and met my, my financial guy the other day and, um, Tamara and I went and sat down and he said, I just want to tell you, man, that fucking Berkshire, that was a fucking, that was a fucking killer call. I said, you're welcome, motherfucker. Why'd you do it? Did you get? Did you talk to somebody? Or? I was I was looking at these these different uh, annuities I was in, and these different and everything was fucking Vanguard. I was in a lot of these different Vanguard things, and some of them were performing really well. So I had always, you know, I'd always Berkshire Hathaway because it was Buffett. I always, you know, but I it was always. The A, you wanted to have shares of the A. That's what is that per share for? for Fuck, Berkshire Hathaway Class A stock right now is probably six hundred thousand dollars a share. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Pull it up, Stevo. Berkshire Hathaway Class A stock. So you figured, all right. So the B. So I. So I then I then I I looked and I I wanted to see six hundred twenty-eight thousand. $628,000 Six hundred twenty-eight thousand fucking dollars a share. Look at that, and that. Look at that fucker thing. It's just rocketing up. Jeez. Yeah, that 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 wouldn't. Have, if you if you had that nine hundred million and put it in that, that that wouldn't fucking done done well for you. Jesus. Yeah. But you know, so um, I looked at in. The number one, uh, like 29% of Berkshire Hathaway stock is owned by Vanguard. And I was just like, oh. How much? 29% of Berkshire Hathaway stock. I I might be wrong now. It in, was in one company's fund. See, see, Portfolio. Um, Steve, see if you can, if you can find out who, who, uh, purchased has the purchasing uh, power of the most shares of Berkshire Hathaway and what the percentage is. I, I'm pretty sure it's Vanguard. Vanguard Group owns approximately 6.7. Look at look at the A. That's the Class B we were talking about. As of this year, six six point seven is. But it's still think of the amount. That, think oh, of what that number is, though. Man. I mean, okay. it's through the roof. Did you see? Did you ever hear of the fear and greed index? I saw this for the first time. A little thing up in the corner. I was reading the business page on CNN, and there was a little thing I clicked, and it gauges seven market statistics to give you where the investment sentiment is now. And we're like on the last couple of ticks of in greed. the greed headed we to, to ex- extreme greed. And it measures, those are the seven there. I can't even see it. market momentum and a few of the other market momentum, 
And if you scroll down, it tells you the seven factors, uh, stock price strength. And this is that same fucking market that was going to be in a recession right now, right? And they were praying for a soft landing. I'll tell you, let's get those rates cut. Let's keep the market where it is. People start buying and selling houses again. I need a bigger goddamn place. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, the the market is roaring, roaring. I, at, I, 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 that's one thing. It just like our house is is too big for just me and Tam. It's like there's no reason to. I couldn't imagine being. I would much rather live in this condo than in our house. Really, you wouldn't feel uh, constricted. No. Even if it wasn't the condo, even if you just got a smaller crib. No, it's got to be the condo. You wouldn't get another house. No, I don't want the fucking maintenance. Right. Maintenance yeah, but isn't that for... a bunch of HOA bullshit and and uh, like that's a pain in the ass too. No, that's fuck. I got fucking. I got automatic weapons. Somebody's gonna fuck with me. <laughs> You do. <clears throat> All right. It is time. It's time for a return segment. It went so well last week. Judge Sexy. This is not Judge Judy. It's Judge Sexy. We're going to play something uh, for Kevin, and he's going to. Th- this week, Kev, Your Honor, um, if I may approach the bench, I know you love. Only if you look in my eyes. <laughs> look at my eyes when I look sentence my eyes. you. Okay, you're you're serious, Kev. I know you love air travel, and um, so, Judge, at what point in this clip do you give authorities the 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 okay to go hands on with this person on a plane? All right, all right. So tell me when at what point they can go hands on. Okay. Hello. Here, we're going to take the off bus for aircraft. Right, Jeff. Right, Jeff. Yep, you're going to have to get off the aircraft, yeah, okay? Yeah, and you're at that. Yep. And I compliment you in that way, man. She's a representative of the aircraft. They don't want you flying on their plane today, okay? So you're going to have to get off they the aircraft. They made us wait and wait and wait. Yeah, that's the way it is. But mm-hmm. right now, I'm going to And that's you... fine, and I will respect that. Okay. So I'm going to need you to grab your bag and just and step off the And I did not do aircraft. anything, actually. Disrespect. We'll talk about Dis- it outside. Disruptive, besides speak my mind. Okay. I knew it. I was going to. Yeah, I'm not fucking Calm down. Oh, you know something. Hey, grab no, your bag. You know that. You know that. Give me another year on the plane, please. If you really, if you are ever going to put your hands on Grab your bag. No, I'm going to sit on the stairs and sit on the stairs. No one's going to put their hands on you. Yeah, yeah, you won't. Grab your bag and just step off you. Yeah, yeah, you won't. It's okay, but I need you to get up. Yeah. Okay? You're going to get up. You may need me to get up, but you don't want to feel money to do as a person. Just like, Jesus, I'm going to put your rice. You need to call. No, no I'm going to do oh, what no. I need to do. I'm going to say what I need to do. And if you, you're going to do whatever you feel you need okay. to do to me, right? You you're going to say what I meant to do. No, to everybody. Stand on, man. Everybody is you're doing You're going to get arrested if you do not I'm stop. I'm already getting arrested. You're going to get arrested if you don't stand up and get off the aircraft. Really if you really want to get arrested, I really then stand up and get off the aircraft. That's all you have really, to do. Really, it's not about that, man. Okay. You can I'm going to ask you one more time. Now, they're I'm waiting to take off. Off. Hands on you, okay? For what reason? Because you're not listening. Let me ask you that. You, you're going to put... No, 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 Why, why do right. they have men? Why do you have a right to put your hands on me, though? Hey, let's go, Ro. Come on. No, go. why do you have a right to put your hands man, on me? Man, What am I up. doing that makes you feel like you have a right to put your hands on me? Seriously, though, D-point. can you tell me? Tell the D-point. So no one's putting their hands on her, anyone who's listening to this. She's just sitting in her goddamn seat. While everyone's right. waiting to Get take off. off, seriously, you can hear yeah. the the she air's blowing. They're ready to go. She's asking you as at a this person. point. Here's what's happening. They're gonna deplane the aircraft. I'm gonna take you off the that plane. Already happening. Don't worry. And you're going to go. Just so no, you know. Already an it, it won't happen. Okay. If you get up and walk out with me right now. Yeah. But if you're not, I don't trust that. Kev, I can't believe you let it go this long. Deplane, you're going to jail. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a. That's the way it is, man. Are you want to trust you? You want to just leave that she, We're not healing. Yeah, get off the line. Come on. She get off the line. I trust you to not. Please. 
Let's go. Oh, yeah. Take it. Let's go. Yeah, Off the plane. Not the best girl. Yeah, she's pause just a minute. fucking. Grab your stuff. Get off. She's it. probably fucking baked. Totally. She's baked. a fucking hippie chick. It's like. Why I don't understand why you would have like number one I I, I don't believe in this fucking uh, Nazi fucking come in with the fucking with two dudes like what are they gonna do she doesn't have a bra and she barely she she I mean it's like well the I mean if the air marshal I don't know, I, I know are they police they're officers not, or? they're fucking police okay so the police so the airport police they, they happen to be men I mean that's that's yeah that's but not fucking, a consequence is it it sure is funny they haven't it, touched her they yeah, yeah but it sure is funny when t- when TSA <laughs> has got to fucking rub down somebody they got to like they're they're not smart enough in this fucking situation to fucking put female patrol p- people in every concourse. I don't. I, I didn't think I, of that. This, if this I is, if I had a if that was a that if that was a, a female that would have came mm-hmm. and she would have been off that fucking plane. I, I would be, the fact that it's two men. That's it's just fucked up. But the first when we started the clip, the the flight attendant was the one talking to her before the officer her. approached. Her. She's just. A, She's she just wants to get home because she's worried about timing out. She don't give a fuck if you think they give a fuck about anything. But there was a woman asking her to leave, and she was non-compliant, very clearly non-compliant. Yeah, well, Kev, okay, if you got to fly back to Daytona and you're sitting behind this madness, you don't want her taking off the plane. No, because she would be. I, I wouldn't. Number one, I would, that's why I don't sit back there. If you were up there hearing this, would you not have turned around and said, I got to get to a Comic-Con in Cincinnati. Now that I don't drink, it's like, I would probably have have, have said, like, go back and give, like, some, find somebody that looks like they're kind of a tough, tough chick and say, here's fucking a hundred bucks, man. Go back. Go back there and grab a handful of hair and drag this fucking bitch off this fucking plane. <laughs> but that's hilarious. He didn't tell her what. Nobody told her what she did. Well, I'm sure. I mean, this was in the preceding. Uh, right, but so, so when the sure cops, she was carrying on, the, and yeah, but so she was. They they obviously had been sitting there a very long time. Yes, that was that was made a parent and then they said they were going to deboard the plane she said they were going to do that anyway it's what it is it's somebody that fucking didn't put on the fucking sheep's fucking outfit and just go bah, you're absolutely right i'll fucking just take it i'm paying five hundred dollars for this seat I'll just sit here while you fucking lie to me. Like, if you fly as much as I do, there's, I'll never forget. I was in Chicago, and I was. this is back when they had paid telephones, and they had paid telephones right behind the gate. And so it was, it was where, the, where the people that were in the, the, the front desk people, there was a, a, a flight attendant out there. Then there was the wall that had the fucking monitor that said where we were going. Then behind it, you could walk behind it, and almost all of them had them back then. There was like two phones back there. So I'm on the phone, and I hear these two fucking girls walk around the side, and they're fucking making up some point. Well, just tell them fucking this, and we'll tell them that, and we'll tell them this. And, and so she, they, they, they don't see me because I'm just like, I'm in the other phone. So I, as soon as I see, see them coming, I feel like... I, get back so I can listen to them because I'm thinking like if they look in my eyes they know uh, it's, it's <laughs> on shit's it's on. on so as soon as she started fucking spouting her fucking lie I came around that fucking corner I said anybody listen to this shit and just fucking ratted that bitch <laughs> bitch out <laughs> and you, she looked at me like fucking like where, where did that big motherfucker come from 
right? Like, Seemingly out of like how did like how do we not how, how do we go back there and commit a crime in front of fucking like that guy? And but at the same time, it's just like when I got on the plane last week and I said, "When did fucking you guys add these uh, fucking you know it looked like a ceiling fan hanging down with the fucking cameras on it?" She goes, hey, "No, I'll say, hey, I'm like, shut up, bitch." Like, no, they they now they haven't. Well, that was a surprising take on on that case, uh, Judge Sexy, and that's why we do this because we. Uh, no, she would have been fucking. I mean, she was semi attractive too, so I mean, it's, it all plays into the that bucket. makes it tough to. Yeah, I don't, I don't in know. the in Kevin's and, court, and, that counts. Yes, and both the fucking cops are overweight fucks, so I, I have no respect for them because they don't go to the gym. So it's like two big fat fucks are, are messing with a kind of cool hippie chick. Then. I, I sentenced both of the fucking cops to six months. <laughs> the cops get sentenced. Brilliant. Yeah, I just like to <clears throat> sentence them. Um, round two of the uh, March Madness. Here would that make Would the, that make me liberal? Yeah, yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> That's uh, you look to to defund the. Uh, you know what? We should give away a free six month uh, membership for Planet Fitness to each of these uh, the segments for the uh, fat cops. They won't use it. Nobody um, does. Nobody gets. There's nobody ever in Planet Fitness. That's the, they get your fucking. They, they get your ten bucks and they. they and then you got to rocket money that bitch, right? I, I mean, I don't think that. I no, I don't think you can rocket money Planet Fitness. I think you got to give a kidney to get out of that fucking deal. <laughs> you know, you're canceling the gym. And it's a whole thing. Um, you know what? You did bring Steve, up. Steve. Yeah, uh, Steve said you got to die. You do. And then they're probably still fucking trying to get to go to your estate and get fucking nine bucks a month. You know, you called attention to the Brazilless breasts, and I remembered that that segment is sponsored by Blue Chew. Um, and uh, as so many of our segments have been, um, guys, let's talk about it. We know what it is, Blue Chew. If you haven't been living under a rock, for God's sakes, you know that Blue Chew is the unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. Take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead, be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple, guys. You go to bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you get that prescription within days. And it's hard on city, fellas. Whenever you need it, it's there for you. It's discreet. It's the best way to do it. It's all done online. No, no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy, for God's sakes. Do you think it works? We have fans that have given testimonials, endless testimonials. I think we had someone last week who had a, a double-header uh, Get Blitzed Blue Chew uh, symphony of horror going on in the bedroom, for God's sakes. Talk about all night long. Blue Chew wants you to have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it. And do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use the promo code NASH, N-A-S-H, at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping, okay? That's BlueChew.com, promo code NASH, to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the uh, the segment, the Judge Sexy segment. So I'm looking at this, and Steve says they were TSA. There's no way they were TSA. TSA can't fucking TSA wouldn't. I don't know that they have the authority to no. uh, to remove anyone from a plane. I don't no. know. No, <clears throat> their job is they're they're pretty much. I, I've fucking cut promos on those fuckers so many times. Yeah, they they don't get the brightest. Uh, if anyone's no. listening to TSA, I'm sure you're the exception. But this is not the brightest crew uh, working TSA at the airport. I don't think. I don't know what you need as a qualification. Steve. Do you it's not like fucking pulse. travel? Uh, what do you write? There might be a p- police district sp- uh, specifically. There is at fucking every major airport. Fucking Atlanta is a giant police station. There's fucking cops all over the place. Yeah, I thought they were. They look like police uniforms. Yeah, those are cops, man. Plus the, got, I don't think TSA has a has a body cam. No, it sounds <clears> like <throat> those are fucking cops. To check your shoes. There's no way if fucking somebody came in with TSA and. You you would say so. You're gonna arrest me? You'd be like, motherfucker! What were you gonna X-ray me? Right, exactly. <laughs> you mean taking shoes off before we talk? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, Plus the uniform. So so, so 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 the day? thing is like now, um, is she wouldn't put her mask on? Is that what that was? 
It it could have been. It could have been certainly. That, uh, that's fucking a little, <clears throat> little old, but there was. That's okay, so what that's, I read. That's Steve Reed so, said, "Okay, so she wouldn't put her mask on." Well, <laughs> if that was the case, it would have had a fucking arrest half the fucking people I flew with during that time. The minute the fucking plane took off, everybody took their masks off. And if I can, she'd be sitting, as soon as rough air hit and she'd have to go sit down, they'd take their mask. It was just, it's a fucking, it was a, like a rib. Yeah. Round two of the March Madness Tournament is here, Kevin. The Jersey Division. I need you to give me a winner for two games here. Ready? Here yep. we go. Game one. Guy uses summons to wipe butt, then throws it at cop. Takes on homeowner calls cops on Bob Dylan, mistaken for a homeless man. We did that one already. Well, they survived the, the last oh. round, so they're they're here. Oh. So, summons anything with shit. Wins. <laughs> yeah. Shit over Bob Dylan. Shit over Bob Dylan. Okay. Uh, second game in Jersey, man charged with decapitating 74 year old mother. And now you do remember from the story, he was laying atop her and singing. Right. It's going to be hard to beat. Going to be tough. 70 year old man, uh, arrested for living with sister's remains. God, it's like a jump ball. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I guess the fact that your mother and she gave birth to you, that that is yeah, the oh. level of depravity there is, yeah, is, that's is over, incredible. That's, yeah, like just la- like being with your sister's remains could be in could, a loving way, right? No, that could be like just like heartache, like fucking. Yeah, like, that's what I mean. Can't. Yeah, yeah, like by not being loving, I'm thinking about fucking the other fucking freak. No, no, no. I meant uh, caring for. Her I can't bet she wish she gave me a little head. No, huh, A little head. <clears throat> So the, yeah, I mean that's going to be tough. This is like Duke. The the the, the decapitated seventy four year old mother is like uh, uh, they'll be taking on the the uh, guy using. They're going to the be like UConn. I think I, yeah. I, I, oh, UConn. Yeah, Duke. I'm showing my. Uh, uh, well, Duke, Duke, Duke used to be good. Yeah, but they're usually still still usually top three. No. No. Last no. year. No. No. Fucking there was. Two four seeds, fucking a nine seed, and a fucking like a. I just did. I did my bracket today. I'm I'm looking at this thing, going, "Holy fuck!" You know, Purdue's gonna shit the bed early. They're one seed. North Carolina shouldn't be a one seed. It should be Iowa State. <clears throat> um, the other fucking Houston. Eh, Houston got beat by Iowa State, and. UConn is UConn is the only team that hasn't had ebb and flows throughout the year. I think they're thirty-one and three. Okay, but they've, I mean, they've had they 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 had so they, they the Big East didn't you know wasn't wasn't really that tough this year. Not like the SEC. Let's go to the Florida division here. Uh, couple of games here. Man shoots his mom and daughter after allegedly revealing desire to date his teen daughter, taking on man killed after putting child he thought was possessed into fire and striking deputy with a rod. Uh, the, what's the first one again? Uh, man shoots uh, his mom and daughter after revealing his desire to date his daughter. Yeah, that, that's the winner. That's Florida man. <clears throat> and, that's... Uh, that's that's tattooed Florida man. The, uh, and so the final Florida game, man bludgeons father to death after learning he got the vaccine, taking on man tried to circumcise two-year-old cousin while babysitting. Yeah, uh, man, man with the circumcision. Okay. It's getting tough, folks. We'll see what happens next week. The uh, We're in the final uh, four teams next week, and we'll see what happens. All right, our high spot of the show this week brought to you, as it is every week, by Mickey Ray Sinatra and Courtney and their Get Blitzed Lit Aid. That's right. This is nano-infused Delta 9 THC sip and syrup. It seems like every week, Kevin, we have someone new trying this in the comments and thanking us profusely. Uh, uh, yeah, we've never had anybody say, hey, that didn't work. No, no. 
Well, uh, you had a friend who had a had a tamp down from the two teaspoons to the one teaspoon. I've got I've had so many people that that, that always you know oh yeah but no I got my my tolerance nah. <laughs> dude I'm telling you. That's right. Nano infused Delta Nine THC sip and syrup. What am I talking about? What is it? It is like THC on steroids. It's a syrup. You just mix it into any beverage, like a tea or a white soda, and uh, as little as a teaspoon or or a prime, as uh, as Kevin has given us. Fast onset, five to fifteen minutes. Nano infused means it goes right into the bloodstream. Okay, bypasses the breakdown on the liver, so you could start watching the the Black Mafia family, and uh, you know. Sip your sip your prime sip, sip your nano infused prime, um, as you do so. Um, this is not gas station uh, Delta Eight bullshit, guys. This is the real deal. THC Delta Nine, the THC that you get from marijuana. If you're in Maryland, you can visit a stay lit smoke shop. But for the rest of us, it's legal to ship right from the Get Blitzed website to all fifty states without a med card, as long as you're over twenty one. Right now, you can save 15% by entering the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, at checkout. Go to get-blitzed.com. That's get-b-l-i-t-z-e-d.com to try the Delta 9 THC Sip and Syrup Lit Aid from Get Blitzed. That's get-blitzed.com. Use the promo code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, save 15%. Right. All right, I'm often looking for something to help me sleep, Kevin. I think uh, I may try the uh, try that right before bed. See if I can ride off into uh, Never Never Land. Kevin, it's time for hashtag Ask Nash. If you would like to ask Kevin a question, that's how you do it. Hashtag Ask Nash. Like Dirty Dog Darcy did, they say, what's your favorite Bill Murray movie? I'm torn between the first two Ghostbusters and Groundhog Day. I dig Bill. I'm a Bill Murray fan. You a Murray fan? Yeah. Favorite Murray movie? You going back to the Caddyshack days? Is it something more recent? It's it's hard for me to fucking pass Stripes. Oh God, Stripes, stripes was is, Stripes was fucking epic. Stripes, classic. Groundhog Day was good, too. I enjoy that. Reference that a lot. Pinball Wizard 809 says, I know it may be a bit of a drive for you, Kevin, but have you ever been to uh, watch the Tigers at spring training in Lakeland? No. It's not that far. It's only two and a half hours. Yeah, it's past Orlando. It's just it's about an hour past Orlando, maybe. Yeah, but that, right? that 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 that's all. It's like Disney traffic. Then it's it's all bumper to bumper now. I just drove fucking that yesterday. I I I, I let out an audible groan when I get to Ugh. when when the express ends Ugh. and it ends right at Universal, right? So it's like that yeah. stretch of like five miles. It's like Universal, Disney Springs, the, you know, the, all the parks. Kissimmee. <clears throat> that Kissimmee, that, that, that uh, where all the hotels are, and it's just like. Mm-hmm. So we were going back, and, um, like, there was, like, everybody's in these gigantic fucking trucks now. Mm-hmm. So there's this GMC Sierra, and it's tailgate me and it's like i've got nowhere to go and i have two questions for you a is the prius the official unofficial pace car of fucking driving on the highway and b have you ever been passed by a prius i mean it's just like i had this fucking white prius that just was going like 60 and a 70 and I've got, you know, somebody with some jacked up Cummings fucking 9.0 up my ass. Gun rack on the back. And finally, it was just like, I just, I, and my wife like does not appreciate my driving as it is. Because I'm a little, uh, how they say, uh, aggressive. Aggressive. Long story short, we went to the 
far right and slingshot across everyone. Three lanes? Yeah, I go, I, I slingshot, I slingshot to the right three lanes and then slingshot back to the left three lanes while going th- through a couple of 18 wheelers, uh, reaching a top speed of 109. And my wife's like, and then all, but like, it was like behind us. Like everything was behind us after that. And we, we, we it was like, Open Smooth road, yeah. yeah. Then this this say uh, Genesis uh, ninety, it's kind of like a rip off uh, S class. It was trying to ride my ass, and so it pushed me and it pushed me and it pushed me. I was going like ninety, and I said like, you know, what? I really don't want to get a fucking ticket. And there's a a bend that it kind of comes up to where you're like twelve, fourteen miles from the like to get off and go to the beach. I'm like, I'm 14 miles away. I've, I've you know, just, I'm not going to fuck with it. So I, I pull over and the guy pulls over behind me. So now it's just like, he, it's, he's that guy, mm. the guy that doesn't like, he'll fucking follow you for a hundred miles. But the minute you pull over, he's going to pull over too. Yeah, and if you do happen to listen to our show, you fucking cocksucker in the brown Genesis 90, why did you pick that color? In fact, they give you that. So, um, how are the Genesis? What, what have you heard about the Genesis? What are they? I wrong? test. I test drove the the uh, 90. They're a fucking. They're a nice car. Yeah. Yeah. How much do they run? <sighs> I bet you now they're probably like 75, 80. I don't know. They they were they were because I was looking at the time I wanted I wanted to get out of the Mustang and Cadillac made made that CT six for a while and uh, it was underpowered, but it was it was just it was on the Impala body, so it was a little bit bigger than of course the Mustang was. Mm. And I've always been a Cadillac guy. So I really like the CT6. And so, like, I was contemplating that I just couldn't, I couldn't pull the trigger on it. But at the same time, I said, let me just, like, because I was, you know, I knew my car was, I was going to get a new car eventually. It ended up being three years later. But um, I the, that 90 had just came out. And I went and test drove it. Hmm. And um, I mean, the fit, fit, it, they got all the bells and whistles. It's just that I don't know. I, I, and then, and nothing racially against the South Koreans. I just don't know if I want to fucking drive a Hyundai. Right. Yeah, so. the high end Hyundai. Um, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> Heading eight is saying that there needs to be a T-shirt. My wife does not appreciate my driving. I'd buy a couple. There you go. Put him in the Mustang from the opening, and uh, you got it. Uh, we have to do a a, a caricature of, of your wife, though. I don't know if she'd appreciate that. No. <laughs> uh, Brent, hey, Kev. Do you think it's okay for a fan to still appreciate a wrestler's character or career, even if that person has done something terrible in their real life uh, and has been canceled by corporate? Thank you both for the laughs. I guess he's referring to someone like, I don't know, a Benoit. Wait, wait, wait. And it was, you could appreciate their career? Yeah, character or career is how they put it. I don't think you know, you can appreciate their character because their character actually must be it's at some degree flawed. Um, you know. I, the on-screen character, I think they're they're going but, yeah, well, I, I don't know. I think the the I, it also depends what you're talking about, right? Like the Benoit thing was so extreme and over the. I wouldn't even. I had Anthony write out any references to Benoit in any of the timelines. I just couldn't as a as a father. I could not say yeah, the no, name it, it, because it, it was it, inconceivable it, 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 of what he did. But at the same time, man, it's like they basically when they when they looked at his brain, man, they basically poured his fucking brain out of his skull. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was, you know. So I, I, I don't know. T- 
today is 17 months that T's been gone. And I'm just, man, it just, there, there are just days, man, that I'm just a really angry motherfucker. And this is one of them, and it's just, I don't know. I would, I, I would hate to be judged on my actions if somebody fucking crossed me on a day like today. Yeah, but Kevin, that's why I said there's differences. Like, you know. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm just saying though. It's just, you know, I, I, I don't. This is a, this is just this is this is like the Vince thing. Let's just leave this the fuck alone. All right. So let me ask you. Let me get a question from the audience then. <clears throat> get a question from the audience. Jen Vargo, Sean, did you like the sandwich YouTube thing? I saw you post it. I didn't look at it yet. I could see you making one of those bad boys in your kitchen for the weekend. Yeah, no, I didn't see that. I did see that uh, someone had snow in Jersey here, for God's sakes. It's it's headed for that. I'm ready for 70-degree weather, for God's sakes. Uh, James Bedford, who do you got in the NCAA men's tourney? And the answer, and is the answer Tennessee? As a Connecticut man, UConn is tempting again. If only you could bet on them, though. Can't bet Connecticut schools in Connecticut. What? Who do you have going all the way? Oh, you didn't do the bracket yet. You said right. I you have, are doing the bracket. I have one. I, I I sat and fudged with one today. It won't be the one I turn in. Um. UConn would be if I had to like you know I think uh, on, on the ESPN bracket thing I think twenty nine percent twenty six percent picked UConn and then uh, the next was like thirteen or fifteen percent picked Houston and eleven percent picked Purdue and like eight percent picked North Carolina which are all one seeds. Uh, I don't see. I mean, to me, like Connecticut is 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 a, is a strong one seed. Um, I could see Iowa State coming, like doing some damage, because Iowa State, man, they they just of all the teams I watched this year, Iowa State was the, like like ball rotation, like simple, like teams are going to like there's like an Alabama, uh, these teams that score a hundred points. They're gonna. They're gonna. Eventually, you get into a, a round where you're playing in some gigantic fucking, you know, sixty-five thousand <laughs> seat arena, and it, you, you can't judge the depth. The fucking ball, you know, the, and, and yeah, all of a sudden, it all changes, right? Yeah, yeah. and all of a sudden, man, it's it's it, it, it's it's the defense you know if you if you got a good defensive team and Iowa State to me is one of those teams that fucking they just like their their rotation on the ball and their their ability to fucking uh stop um penetration i mean it's just so well you know what if you're a betting man i'm looking here you can get some good odds on, uh, yeah, I mean it's you know tennis, t- Tennessee. I mean if, if Tennessee gets by Texas, they I mean they they could conceivably fucking be in the Final Four. Mm-hmm. But if 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 they don't, they've got to get Connect involved early. Auburn is a four seed, which is probably a two seed. Uh, I don't think. I mean. I wouldn't Arizona at fucking fourteen. It, it is a better. I mean, I would not. I would not pick Purdue. I just don't think. It, I don't think Edie's uh, gonna do do. Is gonna carry him. I just don't think they've got. They're just not tournament. Big big t- the Big Ten uh, in general is just not a, a tournament worthy fucking. I don't see uh, Nebraska doing anything. I don't see Northwestern doing anything. Illinois just say they, they had uh, one of their uh, point guards was uh, somehow accused of some kind of rape or sexual assault or some shit today. And I don't know if he's going to play. And it's just like that fucks. Uh, 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 you know. 
Where There's do you a, see uh, Purdue getting eliminated? Same fucking last last year. They were they were number one seed. They got beat by the sixteenth seed. Yeah. They got beat by a, a Wagner. A Wagner. <laughs> hey, they, they, all they got to do they <clears throat> all you got to do is 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 those fucking white boys for fucking Purdue have a bad shooting day. Yeah. It didn't matter if the fucking I let fucking E get as many points as he want. I fucking I, I deny the fucking deny those guys the fucking because they everybody kind of does that sag in and then he, they they push it back out and they fucking sh- shoot set shots. Fuck that shit, man. To so play outside, let them have the inside so stuff. Them, I mean, yeah, you, I mean, you just I might even play a zone against them. Somebody like Connecticut, like Connecticut, they're big. They're big. Can cover him. Uh, there's a lot. There's a, there's some bigs <coughs> that can cover him. Okay, see what happens. Getting started. What tomorrow? Right? Yeah. Tomorrow afternoon. Uh, let's see. Someone else from the house. Let's give the rest of the questions to uh, to our friends here in the house. A couple more. Uh, heading eight. What'd you think of Kate Winslet's rack in Titanic? I give it eight stars. I don't even. It, it was so impressive. I don't remember. She's rather beautiful, uh, Kate Winslet. I tell you, I did. I shared a <coughs> an elevator with her. I was actually, I was revoicing uh, a, a young man who, in the film, basically just banged Kate Winslet for the entire film. The movie was called The Reader, and uh, they didn't like the guys sounds in bed he was young he was like 16 and that was the kind of the point of the film but uh but he was like legit 16 and it sounded a little creepy because she was older so i had to go in and revoice so i go in and do that and like a week later i'm in the duark but in the uh the uh, uh brill building going to the uh studio for another thing but she's in the elevator with me. and so for a second i'm like i could have the epic story of being able to say to her Hey, uh, I just want you to know I had sex with you for about four hours last week. But we were alone. And, you God. know, we're in a time now. Might have came across creepy. A little, well, little something. It's, when I explained that she might have got the laugh, but there would have been that, like, 15 seconds before the, expo- that before the explanation was completed that my, the authorities might have been called. Uh, who else? Who else do we have? Uh, heading I, what did you think of that single camera shot on Raw after Sammy left the ring? With Miz and R Truth cutting a promo on them walking to the ring, I found it very refreshing compared to the past. Do you recall the shot? Yeah, it, yeah, it was. I, I like the fact that they actually established uh, two entrances. Like it was like they weren't going through Gorilla, but they did go through Gorilla. But it was like. It, you know, it, it was kind of the way it felt was like, like there was, you know, like boxing, like they kind of do that. Yeah, well, you know, because if you think about it, like <clears throat> everybody comes out of uh, the same place. So what are they? Are they got like gladiator holding cages back yes. there? Yes, it pens. You know, it's like. And I'm the kind of person as a kid who would have, I mean, I would think that shit. But when you would, would go to, to watch wrestling, they would, the fucking heels would come out one entrance and the baby faces would come out another entrance. Right. You know? Right. But that, that's when they didn't have social media to tell them <laughs> that they were heels. Correct. Look in my eyes as I tell you that Click This is a production of Butch and Sundance Media, produced in association with podcast he created by Tristan Nash, Kevin Nash, and Sean Oliver, producer Steve Kaufman, graphics by Dominic D'Angelo, title sequence and audio edit by Wesley Burleson, theme song by Dale Oliver, technical research by Tristan Nash. Copyright 2024, Butch and Sundance Media. Kev, you want to do another one? Yep. Going to hold you to that.
Never answers the 